Hey y'all, it's Rachel from Wraps by Rachel and I'm making a really different kind of video than I usually do today. Today I'm going to be talking about making uh, some food from a free resource and that is garlic mustard. It is springtime, today is the day before Easter. Um, it rained yesterday, so this is the perfect day to go out and pick garlic mustard. It is the season for, for it. And I am going to kind of come around this way. And this, this is a garlic mustard plant. So it has these, this little, trying to get it in frame that, has this little cluster of four leafed, uh, four petaled flowers. And then you can see that little sort of cluster, which is where the seeds um, and more of the little um, flowers are gonna crop up. The leaf itself is, I'm trying to bring this into frame here, as long as you have a tripod or anything. Um, you have this sort of, let's see, let me do this a different way. Do, 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 do. Okay, you have this sort of scallopy leaf going on and um, the plant is going to grow to about two feet tall. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come to the base of the plant and give a good pull. You want to make sure that you get this little taproot thing going on here um, because this plant is just crazy, crazy invasive. Um, it originally came from Europe. I'm trying to get a good picture. There we go. Get a good picture of these. Um, these originally came from Europe. They were brought over by colonists. Um, it's used as a culinary herb and it really is a, a tasty, tasty little thing. If you crush, if you sort of crush the leaf and give it a sniff, it has kind of a very mild kind of garlicky scent. And you just, when you pull it, you want to be really careful that you are not scattering seeds. Well, um, these are kind of early in the season, so they're not going to be distributing their seeds just yet. But um, coming over here. Um, so I thought I made this video a little bit earlier today, and I went home and realized, oh my God, I just hit the take a picture button instead of doing the um, taking a video with, with my camera. But in just basically like three minutes, I got an entire grocery bag filled, filled with this stuff. And um, the recipe that I used, um, so here's that, that bag, whole bag full of stuff. Um, anyhow, this, it, it drowns out the, you know, it competes with native plants. Um, it makes it um, hard. For, it's not something that deer or other um, native animals eat. And it just spreads like crazy. You know how in the Bible they say that if you have faith, it is but a mustard seed. Well, mustard seeds are just the tiniest, tiniest little things. You saw the size of the actual, um, the actual little flower, right? That kind of pull this up. I mean, look how tiny that flower is um, compared to my finger. And each one of the flowers has like, I think it's 10 seeds or something like that. Um, something along those lines. Anyhow, um, it just, it spreads like crazy. You've probably seen it if you are going on nature walks. I mean, this, this stuff is just, it's just everywhere. So um, the best thing that you can do is to pull it if you don't want to eat them, that's fine. You don't have to, um, but pull them and throw them in the garbage so that um, that you have a healthier neighborhood and a healthier environment for birds and and rabbits and chipmunks and 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 deer and all the other animals that are you know living that we're all trying to coexist with, and the world will be a better place. But it's yummy.
Okay, so I'm going to do a shout out to a couple of people. I'm going to do a shout out to uh, my friend Lauren Wist. Last year, I made a lot of um, garlic mustard pesto and I gave some to her. I want to say that her kids at that time, they were probably four and six. And she came back the next day and said, oh my God, my kids loved this. I made it with chicken and pasta and they just, they just ate it all up. And, and the, um, the son who's like, even a, you know, even a pickier eater than the daughter, just, you know, he asked for seconds. So, um, it's something that, you know, it's, it's free. It's free. Um, you probably have the other ingredients in your pantry and at this point I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the recipe so I'm incredibly academically honest um, this is not my recipe I got this recipe from food52.com I have no interest in them whatsoever um, but uh, I followed their recipe and this this is it right here um, and I'm just gonna go ahead it probably is coming across backwards because yeah it's probably coming across backwards okay so I'm gonna go ahead and read it um, you're gonna do 11 cups of garlic mustard leaves um, and that sounds like a lot but you know literally they're getting it in the shot there um, I have a whole bag full of this stuff um, you probably need about two bags it'll take you less than five minutes to pick this stuff that that that's for sure um and um so you need 11 cups of garlic mustard leaf just loosely chopped then you're gonna um, also do a quarter cup of either pine nuts or walnuts you're gonna do one garlic clove one half cup of parmesan cheese i use more um, you can also mix the Parmesan cheese with a little bit of um, Reggiano, uh, Parmigiana Reggia, Reggiano, I'm probably totally butchering that. I'm sorry, Maria, I'm butchering the Italian. Um, you can also add um, Romano cheese if you want a little bit of a stronger sort of flavor. Um, you know, it's just a matter of personal preference. One cup of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of sugar, and a um, one teaspoon of lemon juice. Did I say the quarter cup of pine nuts or walnuts? I forget. Man, I might have skipped that one. Um, that, that's a matter of your personal preference. And the way that you're going to do this is you're going to use your blender and you're going to blend the garlic and nuts and cheese together until it's, you know, nice and nice and smooth and a, and a good consistency there. And then you're going to add your garlic mustard leaves and you're just going to blend the hell out of it um, and you're gonna just kind of pour that oil in and just kind of a slow steady stream if you um, kind of undo there's that kind of weird pop-up top at the top of your blender take that out so that you don't have stuff flying all over the place and then you can use that little hole and and pour your oil in it that that's what that's for so um, if you didn't know not everybody's a cook um, I'm going to pour your oil in um, nice and slow and steady. And you, again, you're just going to get it to kind of a nice um, kind of smooth consistency. You know, you might want it a little more chunky. That's fine. That's a matter of personal preference. I like it a little bit more, um, you know, kind of a, on a smoother side. Um, and you're also going to add in your salt and your sugar and your lemon juice. And um, uh, I do, um, you know, a couple of teaspoons, tablespoons. I don't measure. I just kind of pour um, and, and then you can taste it and you can add more salt. You can add more, um, add more actual garlic. You can add more cheese. You're probably going to add more cheese. It's, cheese is yummy. Um, that sort of thing. And, um, that is what you're going to do to, um, make your, your pesto. It, it, this, this is fantastic on just, just pasta. It is fantastic as a marinade for your, um, proteins, chicken, tofu, uh, pork. Um, it's a little subtle for beef, but um, if you kind of boosted up the garlic, um, actual garlic in there, um, that would probably probably work for, you know, kind of a, a, a lighter cut of, of meat, like maybe like, um, like a flank steak or something like that. Um, anyhow, so um, and then just, you know, cook everything up as you, you normally would. Um, if you're doing it with pasta, you just kind of add it to the pasta and instead of doing sauce, a little bit goes a long way. Um, and then just kind of taste and um, see how you like it. But I mean, it's great. So um, times are hard right now. Some of us um, 
maybe unemployed or underemployed, living off of savings. You probably, like I said, you probably had these pantry ingredients and then this is just a way to kind of jazz up your meal and um, help the environment also and get out and get a little bit of fresh air and not feel so cooped up in the house. So um, hopefully you like this video. If you do, hit the like button. Um, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel. I do all kinds of things. I do um, shopping hauls when the when the stores are open. Right now everything's closed. Um, I do shopping hauls. I do um, page by page flips of um, journals that I create. I uh, make all kinds of crafts and um, just kind of uh, share my life. So um, stay safe, everybody. I love you all. Um, oh, I'm gonna do one other shout out to um, to another friend of mine, uh, Tara Pomerant. So uh, one of the last things that I did before she moved to Israel is I taught her kids how to how to pull pull this stuff up and. Um, and I'm used to always teach them about plants, um, and useful things that you can do and ways that you can eat some of the things that are just kind of out in your neighborhood. So, um, hi Tara, I miss you. I hope, hope you're, um, enjoying life in Israel and, um, hi to Lauren and also to, to Maria, my, my work, my work bestie who will just, um, tease me mercilessly. I'm sure about the way that I, um, pronounced a uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. So anyhow, um, have a great day.